Venom! Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we are going over the last of the comic books that were donated to me by Cam Frazier. Well, almost the last because I am not going to cover Gwenum versus Carnage, I think it was, like Mary Jane Carnage. We're going to save those because I might do like an alternate universe week where we talk about a bunch of different versions of Venom in the multiverse. And Gwenum is kind of one of those versions. So I figure we'll save that stuff for later. So we won't be covering Gwenum versus Carnage in this one. Uh, we're going to cover everything else, though, that's left. I think there's like six or seven books left that we're going to get through. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not crazy about really any of these, except for one I felt like is worth talking about a little bit more than the others. But most of these were just kind of eh to me. Like some of them don't even tie in. And I did end up buying like one or two of these myself uh, because Cam was just buying the ones that had the King in Black logo on the cover. Like this issue here, Fantastic Four, uh, number 29, that has like the in the corner there, you can see the, the logo. Uh, but not every tie-in had that logo. There was like two or three issues that didn't. And so, uh, so I went and tracked a couple of those down too. So we're going to talk about all that here today. But again, Cam, thank you for all the donations, for all the tie-ins, for everything. Like I said, a lot of these books I found interesting. Um, you know, except for the tie-in part, I felt like was the weakest part of these. Um, in this episode, most of these, I don't even like the issues. Like I, I didn't really enjoy them at all. So I'm going to, these aren't going to be deep discussions. Trust me. <laughs> I'm going to just glaze over a lot of these and we'll talk a little bit about, um, one of them towards the end. So, uh, so first up, we do have Fantastic Four written by Dan Slott, uh, art by Zay Carlos. And, uh, and it's two issues, issue 29 and 30. So hopefully I'll have both covers up there. It's basically tying into the King and Black event where the Fantastic Four have to fight a dragon until they see that Johnny Storm has been taken over by the symbiote along with his girlfriend, who I guess is connected to him by fate or whatever, uh, or whatever she says, which might be bullcrap because she might turn out to be evil, I'm guessing. Um, and then you have the thing, uh, you know, Ben Grimm gets taken over by the symbiote. So you pretty much just have the teams, uh, you know, like split up. You have Mr. Fantastic and Sue kind of fighting Johnny and the thing. And then you have the kids with uh, Dragon Man out fighting Johnny's girlfriend and a couple of, you know, Null Dragons, Symbiote Dragons. And that's pretty much it. Like, that's that's what happens in this book. I don't feel like it ties in heavily to King and Black. And it's weird because I think this book got delayed because they wanted it to come out after King and Black 5 or around the time King and Black 5 because they said it might spoil too much. I don't know what they're talking about. It literally gets to a point in the story where it needs to go into King and Black issue five and it just has Johnny and Ben covered in symbiotes walking away. Like they, they can't stop Reed and Sue. Reed and Sue get into like a, an elevator building and they get safe and they can't get in. So they're like, okay, like we'll just go back to the main battle. And that's what Ben and symbiote infused Ben and, and Johnny do. They just walk away from uh, trying to get in, you know, and, and tear everyone apart. And it's just funny because all these symbiotes, they talk like a, a, a hard game, like Null talking through them is like, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to make you eat your family and all that stuff. And then the first sign of resistance, the symbiotes are like, all right, we'll go to another battle then. And it's like, and then it cuts the next page says days later and everybody's back to normal. Uh, so yeah, just shoddy, sloppy writing from Dan Slott. Uh, I don't know. Like, I, I like that guy Spider-Man run. And of course, I was critical of one thing of it. And he blocked me on uh, on Twitter. He used to follow me. And then he just blocked me on Twitter uh, because I said one thing that was critical. And I didn't even say the book was bad. I was just like, I was just against like one decision that was made. And uh, but I overall gave the book a good rating because I liked it. And he blocked me. <laughs> it's like so. So uh, so ever since then, though, like I felt like, you know, every time he jumps on a book like Iron Man, I read it, but I didn't really like it that much. So I didn't even review it because I feel like that yeah, apparently he pays attention to that stuff and 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 hates everybody who is a little critical of his work. Um, so I didn't really like his Iron Man run and I haven't really enjoyed his Fantastic Four run too much. Um, so. Yeah. So so him doing a tie in to an event that he really has no interest in. Yeah, it, it, he, he did a little bit more than some others, uh, you know, did, uh, because I believe Dan Slott is a good writer. Uh, so he did a little bit more in his tie-ins than other tie-in people did, but it still was lazy in the end when it was just like, ah, eh, we're going to walk off to battle. And it's just to find out what happened, read King of Black 5. And then you turn the page and it's like, you know, days have passed and it's everything's all hunky-dory and you're just like, wow, okay, okay whatever. Um, but as, as much as I didn't like those two issues, this one was way worse. Uh, this is Avengers uh, number 45 by Jason Aaron. Um, 
uh, and the I'll have the, the the title or the screen up there for the art team and stuff like that. The King in Blood uh, by Jason Aaron and Luca Maresca, uh, who is the artist on this issue. And the art's pretty good. I don't know Luca's work, but the art was pretty good. Uh, but this front page here, this first page where it says yesterday, New York City, and it has Ghost Rider driving through a dragon, a symbiote dragon, which is an awesome visual for sure. That is literally the only page that ties into King and Black. <laughs> so the cover, which actually does have the King and Black logo on it, you look inside, it has one page, the first splash page. It says yesterday in New York, and then you turn the page and it's on to another day. And it's basically that little thread that I was curious about in King and Black number five, where it was the vampires were teaming up with the humans or something. And then, then they decided to turn on the humans last second and, and Blade smiled and was like, yeah, well, I know what time it is. And the sun came up and killed all the vampires. Um, I was like, why did John, you know, like, why did Donny Cates, Johnny, I almost said Johnny Blaze. Why did Donny Cates, um, you know, include that? Uh, when all these other tie-ins needed better buttons on them, you know, like little, they, they needed a better job buttoning up some of these other tie-ins, but instead he chose to, uh, do something towards this issue, which came out like two weeks after or something, or a week or two after King of Black number five, and it has one page that ties in. So now I'm even more like dumbfounded of why, uh, Donny Cates referenced this, like, uh, you know, and I, now I, I of course I know the real reason is him and uh, Jason Aaron are friends and they talk a lot about ideas, I guess. And so he threw something towards, you know, his book because Jason Aaron did the next event after this, which was Heroes Reborn, uh, which focuses on Blade. So he kind of, you know, teed him up for that event. But it was so sloppy in the King and Black book. And then now I come and read this and this actually doesn't even set up Heroes Reborn either. It's just a Blade story where you find out that the vampires have created their own nation and they they want to be their own sovereign nation and country and the UN recognize them as people and you know whatever and so like they're they have their own like you know territory essentially or country in the world and so Blade decides that he's going to I guess quit the Avengers or as an Avenger he uh went to the UN and said we need to keep an eye on these things cuz they are creatures you know whether they're living beings or not they are creatures so you're going to need a sheriff of vampire country and so Blade becomes Sheriff of Vampire Country. That's that's what happens in this book. Uh, so really nothing to do with King in Black at all. That first page, and then that was it, that splash page. Um, so yeah, so that was pretty bad. Uh, it gets better from there as far as tie-ins go with Sword. Sword issues two through four um, by Al Ewing and uh, Valerio Shiti. Uh, I, I don't know how to say the, uh, Valerio's last name. Um, but... Uh, their, their art, by the way, Valerio's artwork is amazing. I, I've seen Valerio's stuff in other books, and we've talked about Valerio before. Um, really like Valerio's stuff. And Al Ewing is a good writer. I like Al's stuff, especially with the Immortal Hulk. I've been enjoying that. I know Al is now announced as the next writer of Venom. Um, so this I paid even more attention to and went back and reread because I'm like, hey, this is the next writer of Venom. I kind of want to see what Al does with symbiotes in this one. And of course, it's symbiotes through Null, so they're very vicious, and they do the thing where they, you know, uh, possess somebody, and they say like, "Hey, um, you know, we're gonna make you eat your kids, we're gonna make you eat your family, you know, all that stuff." Um, but this mainly this story focuses on Manifold, um, who is a, a character that I, I liked, who like has this teleportation ability where he can open portals. Um, Fabian Cortez is kind of part of the book, but uh, that's more setting up something else that's gonna happen, I guess, in the X books where he he's doing questionable things and Magneto's not fully agreeing with it. But the basic story is that the symbiotes take over a group of this group of X-Men and mutants and, and sword team and everything like that. They kind of take over that group, particularly Cable. So Cable, with the ability with his robot arm to do the time slip, can teleport around. So the only person he's having trouble, um, you know, and Null is speaking through Cable. The only person that Cable's having trouble capturing is Manifold, because Manifold can also teleport. So there's actually a great scene in this where the two are fighting and they're just teleporting around, trying to get each other and hit each other. And it's it's pretty cool. I gotta give the team credit. Uh, actually, I found that fight, it went on for like two or three pages. I found that fight pretty interesting. Um, I, I kind of really dug that whole approach to, to, uh, to this. Um, but like I said, the other teammates were captured and uh, like Brand was captured and like I said, Fabian Cortez, um, who dies uh, and they have to like resurrect them. Uh, Wizkid, uh, Mentolo, and Hope and all these other characters, they all get, you know, captured. But Frenzy actually breaks free. 
uh, she breaks free and ends up helping uh, Manifold fight back against Cable, and she jumps down behind uh, Cable and rips his arm off so that he can't teleport anymore, even with the symbiote. Uh, she's like, yeah, that arm is what makes you body slide, uh, or time slide, I said earlier, but body slide. And she's like, but without the arm, you can't. So now you as a symbiote, one-armed symbiote, has to fight us. Um, and then they end up, you know, saving the day and, and uh, using their powers and beating uh, the cable infused symbi or symbiote infused cable um and then at the end you know they regroup with magneto and magneto says don't worry krakoa is you know helping on earth we're going to get back to the battle um but uh but i'm glad everyone up here is safe and everything so that's pretty much how that book ended i want to talk a little bit more about that one because i felt like it was three issues so there was more going on but i did like some of the fight in that and i liked um i don't know i wouldn't say i was blown away by al ewan's writing of symbiotes uh, but, uh, but at least, I don't know, it, it was, and he pretty much just did the dragon thing until we had a, a cable infused symbiote, but at least that's different than just them fighting dragons for the whole story. Cause they do fight dragons. Like I think in the first issue, they take a couple out. And then after that, it's basically them being taken down by a, a symbiote infused cable. And I, I liked that. I liked that better than just having dragons show up, which is what most of these tie-ins have done. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about that. And then the last one I want to talk about is Wiccan and Hulkling. Uh, this is uh, this will end all the tie-ins, like I said, except for Gwenham versus Carnage. This ends all of our tie-ins. And again, this was uh, donated by Cam Frazier. It's written by Teeny Howard and Luciano Faccio is the artist on it. The art was, uh, I guess it matches Teeny's writing style pretty well. Uh, sometimes people will see an art style that they don't like. Like, I'm not a big fan of this art style, but I don't hate it because it kind of worked with the story. And I am a big Young Avengers fan. I really, really love that book. Uh, I, I really love that book. And uh, post aneurysm, it was one of the hardcovers that I had that um, I went and joined like a book group uh, uh, for a brief time and uh, in South Carolina. And we all sat around a table and talked about our our, you know, like what we like about the book and stuff. And, uh, and I really enjoyed that experience. So when I think of Young Avengers, I think about that time where um, I met my friend Kells and a couple other people, and we all kind of just shared our thoughts on this book. And then we all passed around our copies and signed them like yearbooks. Uh, and so I have like a pretty good memory of that. So Young Avengers, you know, means something outside of the pages to me too. But in the pages, I really like the story because I never, you know, was an Avengers fan. I was always an X-Men fan. But uh, reading that, I was like, this is actually a, a neat take on the Avengers with these kids who are trying to be the Avengers in the absence of the real Avengers who have broken up by that point uh, and disbanded. So uh, so I like that. So in this, seeing Hulkling and uh, and Wiccan as a, now as a couple, they're married. Uh, Hulkling is now in charge of the Kree Empire, which is pretty cool. Uh, is He's now king. And, uh, and you have... Um, like he has his own accuser, uh, you know, next to him and stuff. Like we have Ronan, the accuser was. Uh, he has his own accuser, this uh, this female accuser who is pretty awesome and has a pretty good moment in this book. Um, but uh, you know, mainly it's just them on their honeymoon after everything that happened in Empire and that one shot that you know that leads into King and Black that we talked about all those months ago. It was like Empire's End or something. It was King and Black tie-in. That had Talos and like his team of scrolls, I think. Um, and a couple Cree members, they were all like uh, taken over by the symbiotes at the end of that issue. They show up in this issue. Um, so I kind of like that. I like that there was a bridge that Teeny Howard went and pulled from that one shot and tried to wrap it up in this one while also telling a fun Hulkling and Wiccan story where they're on their honeymoon after their engagement and they're kind of have to be forced to receive all these gifts from different alien races who are at peace and some who are at war uh, with uh, the Kree. So there's like a Lalandra, not Lalandra, but someone from the Shi'ar Empire shows up and offers them champagne and they're like, you know, and the accuser's like, don't drink it, it could be poisoned. And and the, uh, you know, the Shi'ar Empire is like, look, I know we don't get along, but this is a new beginning, you know, you have a new king and uh, the person he's in love with is of Earth, and we have a kind of a history with Earth, you know, love-hate history with Earth and Charles Xavier and mutants and stuff, um, but this child is, uh, you know, these two kids who are now, you know, I guess on the throne as husband and husband, like, we we, we wanted to present an Earth uh, tradition to them, which is uh, bringing them champagne and wishing them a happy honeymoon, and so the, so so the accuser just doesn't know what the the uh, occasion is, like doesn't know what champagne is and stuff. So the accuser's like, "What? No, this has got to be a trick." And they're like, "No, we're actually 
on the up and up here. And I, I kind of liked all that because they're sitting here in this room and all these gifts are coming to them and they're just like, this is so boring. And they're like, don't worry, your last gift is coming and it's the champagne. But then of course, after the champagne arrives, so do the symbiote. So it starts off with a couple of dragons and I'm like, oh God, they're just going to do the dragon thing. My little bit of interest in the story is already gone because of that. But then they surprised me. Um, after the, the boys team up and go out and fight uh, some of the dragons and take them down, actual symbiotes show up possessing people and it's Talos and his group. And so I like that because I'm like, hey, that ties into that one shot from all those months ago back at the beginning of this event. So I thought this was like a nice bookend, uh, you know, uh, in a way because Teeny was pulling from those. Now, I didn't really love the dialogue too much and I thought some of this gets a little kind of goofy and, and a little like a, a too romancy at times for for even for even me who I have a soft spot for like a good romance but um I like these two characters and I like that they're together because they have been since Young Avengers but I feel like there was just like I don't know there was times where they're literally just like not even paying attention to the battle <laughs> like they, they're like they took down the dragons like oh that's it but there's still a threat going on and they're just like hanging out in their room drinking champagne or whatever and you're just like keep these guys in the fight what are you doing they're, like, they're they're good in a fight like so finally they do they show up at the end and hulkling and wiccan battle talos and his symbiote covered team and they're able to uh cast a spell wiccan's able to cast a spell shine light and separate the symbiotes from talos's uh team and save them uh which is pretty cool and so you know at the end wiccan kind of helps save the day and so does hulkling uh, who gets a couple good uh, strikes in and then all is done they beat these symbiotes but I guess they don't, I guess at this point also the symbiotes of Earth have been beaten and Null has been beaten because they don't like set a course for Earth. They don't do like, you know, it's not like they're like, hey, I wonder if Earth is dealing with this. We should go help them. Like none of that happens. So I'm just going to assume it's because, you know, by the time they beat their symbiote battle, the Earth symbiote battle has ended. Maybe I'm going to assume. Um, but there is a neat moment at the end where the accuser who's kind of been like this hard ass the whole time. She's like, look, I, I, I understand you all want some alone time after all the, um, you know, the presents and gifts that came to you. But, you know, a king has duties and I want you to, you know, be focused on your duties. And, of course, Hulkling's like, yeah, OK. And, you know, and, and Billy's like, or Wiccan is like, yeah, all right, I guess we're not going to get our alone time. And she's like, well, that's not what I'm saying. She goes, I'm saying I know you wanted the alone time, but you have duties. But I'm going to make sure those duties can wait a little bit. And I'm going to give you alone time, but I'm just going to request that you have one being here who stays in your presence. And of course, Wiccan's like, oh man. And, and Hulkling, they're like, you, like you're going to stay here, sit here in case we need to be bodyguarded. And she's like, no, not me. And it's the little robot from earlier that brought in the champagne from the Shi'ar Empire. And it comes in with more champagne. And uh, she's like, you know, she's like, this is the being that I want to stay with you guys. Um, and they're like, yes. And so then, you know, they hug each other or kiss or whatever. And then they grab the champagne and uh, and then the accuser leaves the room and, and they get to have um, their alone time, I guess, their honeymoon finally, after like two days of having to deal with gifts. So I don't know. I just thought that was in a kind of a cute, funny way. I was like, oh, okay. Like that's, that's cute. Like it's a cute little story. It had some humor in it. And I kind of like that. Uh, and then when push came to shove, they kicked ass against those symbiotes, which is what I wanted them to do because they kicked ass in Young Avengers. Actually, I think these are probably two of the most powerful members of the Young Avengers right here. And, uh, and I really like them and they, they fought back big time. So I liked this issue uh, overall, like out of all these ones that we talked about today, sword i was like middle ground on i was like okay some things i like some things i don't but this issue i kind of liked and there was a couple things in here i'm critical of of course but i'm kind of surprised because i don't really like a lot of the x-men stuff or some of teeny howard's writing on some of that other stuff uh that i've read of hers but this wasn't too bad and as a tie-in it wasn't a great tie-in obviously but i like that it wasn't just dragons either and that she did some interesting things with symbiotes and brought in the talos thing with the team because i kind of did wonder what happened to them and i was like hey that's cool i'm glad she did that so uh so those are my thoughts overall like this i thought was the strongest book sword being the second and the other ones i would say don't even if you don't own them don't even waste your money on the avengers tie-in or um or the other ones i talked about which i don't even remember the fantastic four um i i thought those were just a waste of money to be honest with you um, but speaking of a waste of money, uh, I will be talking about this issue, Venom 200, in the next uh, episode. I will go ahead and record my review for that today and try to get that up uh, for you guys very soon, hopefully this weekend. Uh, but yeah, I bought this last night on my way home from work, and I uh, 
Wow, I, I have some things I got to say about it uh, for sure. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I don't think I'm going to get very in-depth on that one either because uh, I think it was pretty disappointing. But so just to prepare you because I know some of you downvote my videos when I give Donny Cates bad reviews. Uh, so I guess get ready to hit the downvote button on the next episode. So uh, let me know what you think of these issues though that we talked about today in the comments down below and uh, we'll have more conversation down there as always. Thanks so much. See you all in the future. Peace.